welcome. Uh, in the last lecture, we are halfway through a computation of integral 0 to infinity sin x by x dx. So, what we have done is that you take g to be sin 1 over sin x by 2 minus 1 over x by 2 and then g becomes continuous function. And uh, so, now uh, here we have integral minus pi to pi g x sin n by n plus 1 half d x is x d x is equal to this. Now, this is nothing but my recall that minus pi to pi d n of x d x. Now, this one is uh, now if I make a change of variable, now you take n plus 1 by 2 of x is equal to u, then this becomes minus n plus 1 half of pi n plus 1 half of pi, then this is sin u, then this is d u d u and then there is a factor of d x by d s that is a factor of x by 2 is going to come to the top. This is what we have got. Now, this integral of minus pi to pi d n x d x just recall that this is going to be summation minus n to n 1 by 2 pi integral minus pi to pi e to the power i n x d x which is going to survive only n equal to 0 then that is 2 pi. So, this is going to be equal to 1, but now there is not a factor of 2 pi. Uh, 2 pi so, this is this is 2 pi. So, then this one is 2 pi minus 2 times. So, now if this is the 2 times sin e is an odd function, u is an odd function. So, this becomes 4 times 0 to n plus 1 half u uh, pi sin u by u du. Now, this is uh, equal to integral minus pi to pi g x sin n plus half x d x. We have written it in this form. Now, on LHS, now this by Riemann Lebesgue lemma, this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. That is what we have seen because n, this is g of x cos x by 2 sin n x d x plus minus pi to pi g of x sin x by 2 cos n x d x. Now, both of them this goes to 0, this goes to 0, therefore, this entire thing goes to 0. Now, left hand side goes to 0 and the right hand side this goes to 2 pi minus 4 0 to infinity sin u by u d u. So, then this implies that 0 to 4 0 to infinity sin u by u d u this is equal to 2 pi and which gives the result what you want. So, this is another cute proof of sin x by x d x integral is equal to pi by 2. Okay. So, now let us uh, try to uh, address the issue of convergence of the Fourier series. One of the question at the beginning we asked ourselves that if we know f hat, then can we construct f? 
and also if the Fourier series converges, is it necessary that it must converse to f. So, fair ask this question, okay, you give me a fact, I can produce f. So, for to get this, he used a technique what we are all familiar with. We have seen that a sequence may not converge, but if I take their average, then this may converge. In the similar way, we can talk this concept for a series. Let us take let summation over n equal to 1 to infinity a n be a series of complex numbers. Okay. Now, we know what is the meaning of the convergence. So, convergence mean we say it converges some s if s n which is equal to n equal to 1 to n a n converges to s. Now, we know that the series may not converge, but the average may converge. That means, I def let me define S n, a sigma n is equal to S 1 plus S n divided by n. Now, we say that summation a n is C 0 summable if sigma n converges to sigma for some sigma as n goes to infinity or if you want to be there exists a sigma such that sigma n converges to sigma. Now, we know that there can be a series which is not summable, but there are sigma n can converge. For example, you take a n is equal to minus 1 to the power n then of course, the series does not converge because the partial sum is going to be either 1, a minus 1 or 0. So, this is oscillating. So, which means S n is equal to minus 1 if n odd and 0 if n even. So, therefore, S n does not converge, it oscillates. However, if I look at sigma n then this is going to be S 1 plus S n divided by n. Now, S 1 is equal to minus 1, S 2 is equal to 0, S 3 is equal to minus 1 like this what we are going to get, but this one is going to definitely converse as n goes to infinity. So, therefore, there can be a series which is not summable, but it is Cesaro summable. Now, natural question is that if the series converges
then what can we say about to which number this series is going to be Caesar summable or whether it is going to be summable first of all and then next if it is summable then to which number it is summable sigma would be what then sigma is equal to s that is what is our claim. So, that is fairly easy. So, you look at sigma n minus of s then this is equal to s 1 plus s n divided by n minus of s which is equal to I can write this as n s by n therefore, this is s 1 minus s plus s n s n minus of s divided by n. Now, the series converges to s what does that mean the partial sum is going to converge to s that means, for epsilon positive there exists a n sub naught such that mod of s n minus of s this is less than epsilon for all n n greater or equal to n sub naught. So, now I can write this sigma n minus of s this to be s 1 minus of s plus s n naught minus 1 minus s divided by n plus s n naught minus s plus divided by n. Now, look at in the second term if I am taking the mod then this is lesser equal to mod of this mod of this mod everywhere this is going to be mod. Now, all in the second term all these s n they are less than epsilon. So, now this is epsilon and then how many epsilons would be there? There will be n minus n naught plus 1 divided by n. So, this is the second term. Now, the first term S n is a bounded because it is a convergent sequence therefore, it is a bounded sequence that means, there exists some m this is the bound divided into n naught divided by n plus this. Now, we are interested for capital N going to be large. Now, you can see that when capital N become large then this is a fixed number n naught and m is also a bound which is a fixed number. So, this goes to 0 and now this one is epsilon times 1 minus n naught by n. Now, n naught by n that goes to 0. So, this entire thing goes to epsilon. So, therefore, for a large n sigma n minus of s that goes to 0 which means sigma n converges to s. Therefore, if the series is summable to s then it is Cesaro summable to the same number, but the converse may not be true. It will be definitely be interesting uh, to ask that ok. So, if it is Cesaro summable then it may or may not converge. Does the do we have some sufficient condition for which if a series is Cesaro summable then we can say that it is summable. So, now essentially we are asking Cesaro summable plus what will imply summable. 
so proposition if a n c zero sum above and n a n this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity then is summable. Okay. So, now denote S n is equal to summation over k from 1 to n a k and sigma k is sigma n is equal to 1 by n s 1 up to s n by n or oh, this is by n is taken. So, plus s n. Okay. So, now we do s n minus of sigma n. So, this is going to be 1 by n, I can write this is s s n minus s 1 plus it goes up to s n minus s n minus of 1, because I am multiplying by n and dividing by n to s n. So, now this you can see that what is the, this is s 1 goes away. So, you are going to get a n a n minus 1 up to a 2 in the first term. In the second term you are going to get a n up to a 3 because you are taking out s 2 and in the last term you are going to get a n. So, now if you add this, this is 1 by n, this is how many are going to survive? This is n minus of 1 of a n plus n minus 2 of a n minus 1 and then this goes up to a 2. So, that is essentially summation over 1 by n k is equal to 1 to n, this is k minus of 1 of a k. Now, this is again in the same fashion if we are given with the n a n converges to 0. So, this converges to the same number sigma if sigma n converges to s then this is summable. Okay. So, that is uh, so now um, before getting into uh, the Fair's theorem. Uh, so, let us uh, look at a very uh, interesting and useful uh, algorithm to add. You see what we have seen is that uh, when we have product of two functions then usually we are tempted to if we need to integrate the product of two functions then we are tempted to use integration by parts. Now, suppose if we have a product series then what happens. So, this is called summation by part. So, this you can say it a lemma. Suppose a n 
n equal to 1 to n and are two finite sequences then summation n from m to n a n b n this is equal to b n minus a m b m minus of 1 minus summation n equal to m to n minus 1 a n plus 1 minus of a n then b n where b capital B k is equal to summation over n equal to 1 to k the partial sum of b n. See the similarity with the integration by parts. What do you do the integration by parts? What you do is that you take the function and then the multiply that with the integral and take at the values at the end point. So, now this integral is going to be replaced by sum. So, therefore, this is b n at the end point b n b m minus 1 and now then you are integrating with the derivative and then the integral of the function g. So, now the derivative here it is going to be replaced by the difference. So, this is why it is called summation by parts. So, the proof is a simple game of arithmetic. So, now observe that this each b n is equal to b n minus of b n minus of 1. So, therefore, what you have got look at the right hand side a n b n min minus here if I am taking n minus of 1 then I am going to get a n b n minus of 1 and then this is n minus of 1 then this is plus a n minus of 1 and b n minus of 1. Now, for n equal to n minus 2 here I am going to get minus of a n minus 1 b n minus 2 then plus a n minus 2 b n minus 2 minus it will goes up to the m mth term is going to be minus a m plus 1 uh, b m plus a m b m and uh, this goes to. So, now as you can see that this what you are going to get a n and you have a a m b m minus 1. So, if you do the cancellation here you have got b n then plus here you are going to get b b n minus 1 b n minus 2 this is going to get b of n minus of 1 like this what you are going to get that this is RHS a LHS. So, as an application of this what uh, one can see the all of us we are familiar with this result. Suppose this partial sum of for b n they are bounded and 
A n is a monotonically decreasing sequence which converges to 0. Then what happened to summation of n equal to m to n a n b n this is going to be a n b n minus a m b m minus 1 plus or minus a n plus 1 minus of a n and then this is b n. Now, if you take the modulus inside then the mod of a n plus 1 minus of a n this is a decreasing sequence. So, this is a n minus of a n minus of n plus of 1. So, therefore, when we are taking the mod inside. So, here we have got then this one mod of summation n equal to m to n uh, a n b n this is lesser equal to some constant times m of mod of a n plus m of mod of a m and then this is plus m times summation over m to n minus of 1 a n minus of a n plus 1 and this is equal to m mod a n plus m mod a m plus m times. Now, this is a telescopic sum. So, the telescopic sum this is going to survive only when the first term and the last term. So, I have got then this is a m and then minus of a n. Now, a n's we have chosen the sequence which dec are decreasing sequences and converging to 0. So, therefore, this goes to 0, this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. Therefore, the tail of the series a n b n this goes to 0. We know that in this case the series is going to converge. So, this is what you have used in the Dirichlet test or Dedekind test. Uh, we have seen that in the basic calculus and also when we are recalling uh, the convergence of series we have seen this. Okay, so, now we are now well equipped to address what Fair had asked that if someone provides us f hat of n, can we give back the original function f in the next lecture? will attempt to see this. Thank you.